Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Gonna be giving you my player ratings from our 1 1 draw with Fulham at Old Trafford. David De Gea, I'm gonna give him a 6 out of 10. David De Gea made a good save to deny Carvalho. Carvalho was one on one with De Gea. He should have actually scored. De Gea also made a good save at his near post to deny Luckman. Couldn't do anything about Joe Bryan's equaliser. De Gea is going to be starting in goal for the Europa League final. Anwan Wambasaka, I'm going to give him a 5 out of 10. I thought he enjoyed a pretty poor game. You've got to say he was partly to blame for Fulham's equaliser because he lost his man. And he was very poor going forward. At times, he put some good crosses into the box. This has been Anne wan second full season at Man United. We got him in a deal worth £50 million from Crystal Palace in the summer of 2019. So just a 5 out of 10 for him. Victor Lindelof. I'm going to give him a 5 out of 10. He enjoyed a pretty poor game. Didn't really get forward enough and he made a mistake in the first half. As you all know, I've got my strong reservations about Lindelof. Axel Tuanzebe. I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. I thought he was our best defender on the night. He was confident on the ball. He was well composed. And he read the game quite well. The best game I recall Axel Tuanzebe having was the game against PSG. He seldom plays for Manchester United. Obviously, Axel Tuanzebe started ahead of Eric Bay. Luke Shaw, I'm going to give him a 5 out of 10. Don't think he enjoyed the best of games. Luke Shaw has been our best player this season, by far. But in the last two or three games, he's looked off the pace. But Luke Shaw's had a good career at Man United despite his injuries. He's been at the club now over six years. Fred, I'm going to give him a 5 out of 10. To be honest, he looked good when he was off the ball. And at times his work rate was good. But when he was on the ball, he looked very, very poor. Scott McTominway, I'm going to give him a 4 out of 10. I thought he enjoyed another poor game. Bruno Fernandes, I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. He enjoyed a good game. It actually said that he got the assist for Edison Cavani's superb goal. But there was a debate whether Bruno Fernandes touched it or not. I don't think he did touch it. Bruno Fernandes had some very, very good chances in the game. So he should have actually got his name on the score sheet. He had two good chances from three kicks. So yeah, 7 out of 10 for Bruno Fernandes. Paul Pogba, 
I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. Pretty average performance by Paul Pogba. I thought in the first half, though, he looked quite bright. He exploited a lot of space. He actually had a good chance in the first half from a header. It just went over the bar and it was a good cross from Anwan Bissaka. Mason Greenwood, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. Uh, Mason Greenwood actually had a very, very good chance in the game when he was one-on-one -on -one with Ariola, but he didn't convert the chance. Ariola saved it, so Mason Greenwood wasn't clinical against Fulham. Edison Cavani, I'm going to give him a 8 out of 10. Like I said, his goal was absolutely superb. Um, it was from 40 yards out. He obviously saw Ariola off his line and he dinked it over him. Edison Cavani's goal came from De Gea's goal kick. So obviously Fernandez didn't touch it, then De Gea got the assist. I'm very, very glad that Cavani is staying for next season because he has made a fantastic impact since he's come in. Not so long ago, Cavani signed a one-year deal with Man United. Romano confirmed that. We brought substitutions on in the game. We obviously saw Marcus Rashford come on. I'll give him a 6 out of 10. Ahmad Dilo Traore came on. I'll give him a 6 out of 10. And Donny van der Beek came on, I'll give him a 6 out of 10. So that is your player ratings from our 1-1 draw with Fulham. It was our final home game of this season. We are now winless in our last three league games. Because obviously we drew 1-1 with Fulham yesterday. We lost 4-2 to Liverpool not so long ago. I was disappointed with losing to Liverpool. Um, obviously, it was Jurgen Klopp's first win at Old Trafford and it was Liverpool's first win at Old Trafford in the Premier League since 2014. I wasn't too disappointed with us losing to Leicester because Solskjaer played a weakened squad, obviously with the fixture congestion. We have now drop, dropped 10 points from winning positions at Old Trafford this season. We've been very, very poor at Old Trafford this season. I think a lot of it's been to do with no fans being there. You know, it's had a bad effect on the players. Obviously, there was 10,000 fans at Old Trafford yesterday. But all our defeats have come at Old Trafford in the Premier League this season. But I was very, very disappointed because I was actually expecting us to beat Fulham. I thought we played very well in the first half, but I thought the second half we was very, very poor. Uh, Fulham were actually the better team in the second half. From a Fulham perspective, though, they'd have been very, very delighted with the result. You know, Fulham have obviously got nothing to play for because they're already relegated. Fulham were going into the game on the back of a 3-1 loss against Southampton. And we do actually beat Fulham most of the time. Uh, we obviously beaten them at Craven Cottage earlier on this season, 2-1. We beat them 4-1 at Old Trafford back in 2018. The last time Fulham beat us was back in December 2009. It was 3-0 to Fulham at Craven Cottage. Fulham's current manager is Scott Parker. I presume Fulham are going to stick with Scott Parker despite them being relegated from the Premier League because Scott Parker was the one that brought Fulham up last season from the Championship. Scott Parker has been Fulham manager now over two years. Fulham appointed him in, in February 2019 
uh, to replace Claudio Ranieri because Fulham did sack Claudio Ranieri. Didn't they? Our final game of the Premier League season is Wolves at Molyneux. That is on Sunday. And you know what? I'm expecting Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to rotate heavily for that game. You know, he's going to rest some key players because obviously the Europa League final is coming up. The Europa League is obviously our priority now. We do play Villarreal in the final. It's in Poland, in Ganask. Villarreal are no pushovers, but they're not world beaters. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's got to take this game seriously against Villarreal. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is looking to win his first trophy as Manchester United manager. It's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first major final as Man United manager, and it's our eighth European final. We haven't won a trophy since 2017. I'm very, very sceptical that Harry Maguire will be available for the Europa League final because Solskjaer's come out and said that things are not looking great with Maguire. He's obviously had ligament damage in his ankle. He sustained the ankle injury in our 3-1 win against Aston Villa. Maguire has been a big miss because defensively we are shambolic without him. Solskjaer not so long ago give a special press conference ahead of the game against Villarreal. He spoke about Maguire then. Uh, Martial has been out of an knee injury for a while, but Solskjaer said he's hopeful that he will be available for the game against Villarreal. Uh, Phil Jones is obviously still out with injury. He doesn't get in our 11 anyway. He's been out of injury for a while. And Daniel James, um, he's recently been injured. But uh, we win the Europa League, um, that gives us confidence and that gives us something to build on going on into next season. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is aware that next season is going to be huge for him because next season Solskjaer has got to exceed expectations if he is to remain Manchester United manager. If things do go wrong next season, then I think there's a very, very good chance that Solskjaer will be sacked. But you know what? I didn't expect Solskjaer to do as well as he has done. You know, to say the squad he was left with when he came in, I think he's actually done a pretty good job. Obviously, a lot of United fans have been demanding Solskjaer out and they've heavily criticised him. They've obviously got their reasons behind it, but I presume there's still a lot of United fans that are only going to Solskjaer in and they believe that he needs more time at the club. This has been his second full season at Manchester United. We are guaranteed Champions League football for next season, which is good. And we're probably going to finish second in the Premier League this season. Us finishing second, though, isn't an achievement, like Solskjaer easily said. If we win the Europa League, then that's an achievement. But, you know, Solskjaer is our best manager since Ferguson because he has made very, very good progress. It's just good that he's brought consistency back. Solskjaer has just under a year left on his current three-year contract. Earlier on this season, it said that Solskjaer agreed a three-year contract worth £30 million, likely to be two years with an option of an extra one now. I don't think Solskjaer is a long-term manager for Man United, like I've mentioned on my recent videos, and I think a lot of United fans will agree with me on that aspect, but he does deserve at least another season. But whether Solskjaer succeeds or not as Man United manager, we will still always adore him. Because at the end of the day, he is a club legend. He enjoyed 11 years as a player for Man United. He flourished under Sir Alex Ferguson's guidance. I 
And reflecting how long he's been at the football club, he has gained some managerial experience and he has learned quite a bit on the job. And he's tried quite a few different elements. We appointed Solskjaer in, in December 2018 to replace Mourinho. And Solskjaer knew when he'd taken over at Man United it was going to be a massive job despite knowing the club through thick and thin. The club decided to give Solskjaer the job permanently in March 2019. It's with how well he did as the interim manager. But there's a lot of positives regarding Ole. You know, he has made good signings as Manchester United manager so far. He's spent almost £300 million. He's got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he's come in. He's done well in a lot of aspects this season. He did well last season in his first full season. We've enjoyed good periods under him. And I like the way he has promoted the youth. And don't forget, at one point, he got us top of the Premier League. So they are the positives regarding him. I've obviously got my concerns about Oli as well. You know, hasn't got a proven pedigree as a manager and his decision making is another concern. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, though, is aware of how big the summer transfer window is going to be for himself and Manchester United in general. It's not long now until the summer transfer window opens. On my next video, I will be giving you an update on some more transfer news. It's very imperative that Solskjaer gets the players that he wants to recommend in in the summer transfer window. Solskjaer has already come out and said that he wants three world-class signings in order for Man United to challenge for the Premier League title next season. And I've already identified the areas in the squad where we need to strengthen up. Solskjaer's made it clear that he wants good backing. Because he's not been backed enough so far as Manchester United manager because he hasn't got all the players that he wanted to recommend him. But... I'm expecting him to get the backing he deserves in the summer transfer window because we've got John Murtough, he's our director of football. We've got Darren Fletcher, he's our technical director. And we've also got Matt Judge. And Matt Judge has been part of the club for a long time. The summer transfer window will be Ollie's fifth transfer window as permanent Man United manager. We're going to offload quite a few players in the summer transfer window, so in that aspect we'll generate money and it will help us with our rebuilding process. He recently said the 10 players that could depart the club in the summer transfer window. Uh, De Gea, we could still possibly sell him in the summer transfer window. Sergio Romero, you know, I'm expecting us to offload him. I'm also expecting us to offload Lee Grant. Uh, I want us to offload Phil Jones, whether we're doing that, I do not know. Brandon Williams, I think we need to offload him. So obviously he can get more opportunities and plus he'll gain more experience because Williams doesn't hardly get in our team. He is our third choice left back. Diego Delore, I think we'll be looking to get rid of him permanently. He's out on loan with AC Milan at the moment. You know, I think Milan want to get him permanently. Andres Pereira, um, I think we'll be looking to get rid of him permanently. He's out on loan with Lazio at the moment. Uh, Nemanja Matic, I think there's a very good chance that we'll offload him because he's not one of our first choice midfielders. Uh, Pogba could still be leaving Man United in the summer chance for Winder, but I hope he doesn't because we've been getting the best out of him in recent months. It recently said we could sell Paul Popper for just £55 million in the summer transfer window. Uh, Wan Matter, I think there's a good chance that we'll offload him. But there again, Solskjaer recently said that no decision has been made on Wan Mata's future yet. And a lot of United fans are saying that we need to offload Anthony Martial because he has been out of form for the vast majority of this season. 
You obviously know the news regarding the Glazers. Uh, Solskjaer did recently say that the fans' protests have affected the players. Obviously, our fans have been protesting against the Glazers a lot in recent weeks. Will the Old Trafford protests force the Glazers out of the club? Not so long ago, Solskjaer did say that the Glazers apologised to him over the European Super League. Solskjaer did mention that the violent instance went too far, but he says the club need to take notice of the fans, because obviously we can understand the fans' frustration. Not so long ago, Solskjaer was angry with Gary Neville over the Man United protests. You know, Gary Neville had quite a lot to say on it. Joe Glazer wrote a letter to Man United fans not so long ago, and the other week, Avram Glazer refused to apologise over the European Super League. Uh, Sky News caught up with him in Florida, and he refused to answer any questions. It did say not so long ago that the Glazers could be forced to sell Man United, but for only £4 billion. Before that, he said that the Glazers have got no intentions of selling the club. Uh, Solskjaer did actually say earlier on this season that the Glazer family will not sell Man United. And he told protesters that Joe Glazer loves the club. Now, Joe Glazer released a statement earlier on this season apologising to club fans of the European Super League plans. But we get the Glazers out of Manchester United, it will definitely be the right decision because the Glazers put us in so much debt. And in general, I hate the way the football club has been run now for a long time. We've got to get new owners in. The Glazers bought Man United for £500 million in 2005. They've been at the club for around 16 years now. Uh, we had the good news regarding Woodward earlier on this season because it got announced that he resigned as Manchester United Vice-Chairman. Uh, Woodward will be standing down at the end of the year. All United fans were happy with the news regarding Woodward because we've been very critical of him for a long time. Woodward has had a 16-year association with Man United. Who will be our new chairman to replace him? Now, the last time I read up, he said that Edwin van der Sar was the favourite to replace him. Not so long ago, Ed Woodward's... Yeah... Yeah, Ed Woodward's mansion got attacked by masked protesters. So there you go. But um, like I say, it'll be interesting to see what players Man United can bring in in the summer transfer window and it'll be interesting to see how we perform next season. You know, next season are we going to enjoy a better season than we have this season? We will have to see what happens. But in the last eight years, Man United have been playing catch-up, as you all know. We've made mistakes in the last eight years, and that's why we haven't been as consistent as we'd like to have been. Uh, we've sat three managers since Ferguson retired. That was David Moyes. We sacked him after ten months. We sacked Louis van Gaal after two years, despite him winning the FA Cup. And we sacked Jose Mourinho after two and a half years, despite him winning three trophies in his first season. If you want to come out and count the Community Shield. And we also got second place, I think, in Mourinho's first season. So you can say Mourinho enjoyed one good season at Man United. So yeah, we've sacked three managers and we're not even really known as a sacking football club. Um, the board's been one of the biggest problems at the club for a long time. Reflecting now poor our recruitment policy's been. We've also overpaid for players. And in general, the managers that we've had since Ferguson retired haven't got the players that they wanted to recommend in. We've brought around 37 players in since Ferguson retired. And I think in total, we've spent over £1 billion on them. But um, we'll never be the team we was under Ferguson. No one's going to replicate what Ferguson did at the club. You know, Alex Ferguson enjoyed what a 26-27 year tenure at Man United, won 30-odd trophies, including 13 Premier League titles. So, reflecting on that, he brought success to the club. But Ferguson didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at Man United. 
Uh, Alex Ferguson reckons that Solskjaer's actually done a pretty good job at Man United. So anyway, guys, on my next video, I'll be giving you an update on some transfer news. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always, and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.